In this video I'm going to show you how to move trees and shrubs. And this technique will work for any kind of tree that you want. It just happens that today we're going to be working on evergreens. I'm here standing beside one of my favorite pines called Winton. He's part of my evergreen collection and I want to make some changes in this part of the garden which requires me to move some of the smaller evergreens. These trees have been in place for about 12 to 14 years, so they have a pretty good established root system. When we dig them up, we're going to do a lot of damage to that root system, and that's one of the problems with moving them. So let's first talk about the best time to move them. That probably depends a bit on your climate, but in my experience, you can move them in spring or fall, and I'm in zone five. I would never try to move these sort of things in the middle of summer, even in this colder climate. And in warmer climates, it's even more important to stay away from the heat. I found that moving them in spring does a lot less damage to the plant than moving them in fall, even though a lot of people say you can move them in fall. I think the winters in our Zone 5 garden are just a bit too cold, and they dry out too much during the winter. So now I move most of my plants in the spring. It's now fall, so why are we out here talking about moving these if I want to move them in the spring? And that leads me to the secret of moving mature trees and shrubs. Because these plants have been in the ground for so long, they have a large root system. Remember that trees and shrubs have roots that are two to three times away from their drip zone. The drip zone is the end of the branches here. And people used to think that most of the growing roots are right underneath here, right under this drip zone. But that's simply not true. The roots for this tree are way out there. When we try to dig these plants up, we're going to cut off almost all its roots. And that does tremendous damage to a plant. With deciduous trees, we can do that when they're completely dormant. And it does a bit less damage to them. But when we move evergreens, they stay green all year long. So we cut off all the roots. The tree now has a hard time getting water, and yet these needles are green and living all winter long. They need water or else they're gonna go brown and fall off. So the problem is that without the roots, the tree simply can't get enough water to keep the needles green. But there's a trick. What you do is you start moving them in fall, but you actually move them in spring. Let me show you what I mean. The tool I'm going to use today is a spade, and it works really well because it has this nice sharp edge. But if you've been using the spade for other things, it's a good idea to get out your file and give it a quick file. You want a nice sharp edge before we start this work. What I want to do is move these three smaller evergreens. Over the years, these other evergreens like Winton here have grown too tall and they're now shading these guys too much. So they're not really doing that great. You might be surprised that these plants are so small when I've told you that they've been in the ground for 14 years. But these are very slow growing plants. This one over here probably goes less than an inch a year. This one might be an uh, inch and a half. Now this one here hardly grows at all. So what I want to do is move them into a special area of the garden where the miniature evergreens are being highlighted. To start the process, first thing I do is I move away all of the mulch so I can see what I'm doing. I then come out from the shrub about the distance that I'm going to dig it up in the spring and I usually go out about a foot. Take the spade, dig it in really good and I'm cutting the roots when I do that. That's why it was important to have a sharp spade. Then I move over a piece and do it again. So what I've done here is I've cut the roots here and over here, but I haven't cut them in the space between. I'll do another couple cuts over there and repeat the process. So what I now have is I have a shrub that has about half of its roots 
still going out a long distance from the shrub. I haven't touched those. The other half have been severed. The tree still has good roots to collect water, but it has less than before. It's fall. Right now it's about the 3rd of September and the temperatures are starting to fall and that's a perfect time to do this. In fall the air becomes cold but the ground is still warm and that's perfect for root growth. So the cutoff roots are going to start to grow. So this shrub will have some new growing root that are short right about a foot away from the plant and it'll have the older roots that are farther away. So it will be able to get through the winter with those roots. I'll also water it a bit extra this fall to make sure that it doesn't dry out. In spring I'll come along and dig up the plant and it will have a whole bunch of new roots right close to the tree and those will help it survive once I move it. You'll notice that I'm severing the roots, but I'm not digging up the plant. I'm really not trying to move the plant in any way. All of that will happen in spring. Now let me show you some evergreens that I moved many years ago and show you what the results look like. You're looking at a couple blue spruce that are now over 20 feet tall. And they were moved about 14 years ago when I first moved into this property. I use the same technique for moving these. I came along the fall and severed some of the roots and then left the plant to grow new roots over the winter. Then in spring I came along, dug up the whole plant and moved it. Since these evergreens were already about five feet tall, I had to dig a much bigger hole around the plant, but the technique is exactly the same. I planted this miniature bird's nest spruce about 14 years ago. But at the time it was a small shrub, about a foot and a half in diameter, and it grows very slowly. It only grows about an inch a year. So I put it near the edge of the bed, and even though it grows slowly, over time it just got too big and it was starting to grow out into the grass. So about four years ago I decided to move the shrub and move it back towards the center of the bed. I used the technique that I showed you in this video, cutting some of the roots in fall and transplanting it in spring and it showed almost no dieback. It did have a bit of dieback in the middle of the shrub, in the older section, but you can see that over the last couple of years this had grown in and now it's formed a nice sized shrub. Unfortunately it's only going to last for another four or five years and it's going to get too big for this bed and I may have to move it again. I hope that this video has given you the confidence to move your trees and shrubs. Start to move in fall, move it in spring, and you will have success with your own trees and shrubs. Have a good time in the garden.